for that. Uh, in, in AI, and I have to say, uh, Palantir reported this week, mm -hmm. and Alex Karp, who's the CEO, uh, believes that Palantir will be the largest AI company in the world. And after looking at their results, listening to, uh, to Alex and his team, I think that might be right. Because what's happening is companies around the world are saying, this is big and we know we can't be left behind, mm -hmm. and CEOs are getting involved in the decision, not just CTOs. Because there's so many small AI companies that have these, you know, chat bots and point solutions, and, you know, they're depending on others to put them all together. Uh, Palantir is saying, no, you have to look at the organization and, in, and get the data in one place, integrate it, get the workflows. So I think it, it, it could be a big disruptor, and nobody believes this right now, but it could be a big disruptor to Microsoft. Mm. Mm. Felix here, yeah, and wow, did you listen to what Kathy just said? Is it really possible that little mm. Palantir could disrupt the Goliath that is Microsoft? Just put this into perspective. Microsoft onboards 2,000 customers a day. Palantir, even at the hype of the AIP thing right now, is doing maybe three trials a day. Very, very different scale businesses. So is this possible? Is she smoking something or is this actually worth exploring? I want to walk you through that. Before we do, I also want to walk you through how we make money and how I can sit here in this beautiful little tropical island and not worry about bills getting paid. And... The way you can learn that is come and join me on Tuesday evening for live trading training. It'll be at felixfriends.org slash webinar and I'll give you my entire system and strategy how even in the midst of all the madness we make money and it's way simpler than you think beginners can do it. So grab yourself a seat. Link is down below. Now I've got some notes here to make sure that I give you the most value as possible. What this is really saying to me is that the era of closed systems is over. What do I mean by that? The old software companies, the Microsofts, they create Windows, an operating system that everything is closed source. You have to comply with certain rules to make your software work. If your data is sitting on a different system, it probably can't talk to the Microsoft system. Apple has a very similar philosophy with its, its uh, app store, for example. And everybody's done the same thing, Google with Android. Everybody builds a system that doesn't really work with another system. And that's created an opening. And the opening is, well, with AI, there are so many small companies out there that are creating something tremendous. And people want access to it. Companies want the best. They don't just want the latest thing that Microsoft puts out. And therefore, they need to be able to get all their systems to talk to each other. And if you ever worked in a large corporation, they've probably done some mergers and they probably still have different software systems. They might have 5, 10, 20, 50 different software systems that are all held together with sticky tape by some very, very hardworking IT people but ultimately none of it really wants to work together because that's how software has been coded in the 90s and 2000s and ever since. Now, the giveaway really is that companies like Google and Amazon and Microsoft are essentially already all working with Palantir and they're making it easy for their customers to work with Palantir through their cloud offering. Why? Because their customers will otherwise go somewhere else. So the product that Palantir has created appears to be so freaking good that they're making the big tech boys move and fall in line. And that says something to me. So really, it also says that it's incredibly hard to build Foundry and AIP because otherwise Microsoft would have just said, oh, don't worry, we've got the same thing. You don't need those guys. Let's turn off this the switch, which is typically how they operate, right? They've done that with the browser market, for example, right? Remember the good old browser that was uh, the biggest browser during the dot-com era. Exactly. Netscape doesn't exist anymore. Microsoft ate it, had it for breakfast. 
And they don't seem to be able to do that with Palantir because it's taken Palantir like, what, 20 years to come up with this product, the current level, and it seems to be very, very hard to replicate. And therefore, Palantir is arguably really the ultimate disruptor out there that is able to disrupt the guys who have unlimited budgets and unlimited number of software engineers. And I want to set a challenge to you. Give me three products that give you a competitive advantage if you're a company. Three software products. Can you name three that make you better than all of your competitors? I can't. I can name one. Then give me, let's try it a different way. Give me three software products that make you more money than what you're paying for it. It's a little bit of an easier bar. I mean, there are certain things like we use Slack, for example, which I think is amazing. Um, what else? You could argue email, but I can't really think of anything that I use where I go, oh, there isn't an alternative for this. There is pretty much an alternative for pretty much every software out there. You just pick in whichever flavor you like, right? Or what your IT people love. And if you think about the Veterans Affairs Department, arguably one of the worst run government departments out there, even they, using Palantir, managed to save like, what is it, 90 billion, 90 million rather, in like three months. So this makes you far, far, far more money than pretty much anything else you could ever buy out there. And from my perspective, that makes it rather inevitable that they come out on top. Why is it taking so long? Because it's complicated. And the way software is typically acquired by companies is at a fairly low level. And IT people who spent the last 15 years or 20 years of their career building up the sticky tape system sometimes can be a little bit close-minded. And if you're a software engineer, I hope you're not one of those, but I've met both kinds. Some are brilliant and they're always looking for something new and some are like, no, 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 this is how we do it. We don't want something else coming in and replacing what I've tried to do and somewhat failed in like 10 minutes. And that's what you're seeing in the demos. People going in saying, we tried to build this for the last 10 years. You guys just did it in eight minutes. That is disruption. That's why I like this. And if I can think of the large corporations that I've had the misery of working with, they all have an absolute mess of an IT system. Those guys can benefit so tremendously from it. And maybe the IT guys are somewhat scared because some of them will lose their job. I think they will. But ultimately, IT will transform into a profit center rather than a cost center for these businesses. And that is ultimately disruptive. So if you work in IT, study this stuff. Because if you are the guy who brings us to the CEO, you are the next CTO, you're going to get a lot of money and bonuses and you should and you deserve it. So I continue to be very bullish. Also, it's just my perspective. An old banker here on holiday in this beautiful tropical place. And let me just show you a little bit what this looks like here. One second. This is, this is the struggle that we're currently living in. The only thing that we're really missing here is, uh, is Winston, kind of that border. And then here is where we struggle over our breakfast, which is also an absolutely beautiful space. Um, it looks a little bit darker than it is in real life because it's super sunny out there and it's just green, 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 and it's just glorious. So I hope you are going to be able to go somewhere as beautiful, get the financial freedom you deserve. And for that, I'd encourage you come and learn how to really make money from your money. Head over to feelichfriends.org slash webinar, grab yourself a seat. It's completely free, zero risk, only upside. Thanks for tuning in, my friend. Felix here from a tropical island near you. And I'm a little bit worried about the data I just went through to see what really happened yesterday. What happened to the big stocks? What happened to big tech? Why is it falling? Is it going to fall some more? And I want you to understand it so you can make better decisions this week and for the rest of the year and be prepared for everything.